Hi, I'm Ashley. Um, some of you may know me, um, some of you may not. I normally attend first service, so um, thank you all for listening. I'm going to open with prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time that you've given me to share all the wonderful things that you've done in my life, Lord. I don't know where I would be without you today, Lord. I thank you for each and every one of the people that had enough courage to share just how you've touched their lives today as well. Lord, be with me. Give me courage. Give me strength. I trust that you're going to do this for me. And I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I was born December 11th, 1983, to Charles and Nancy Turner. My parents were both Christians, and together they decided to de dedicate my life to the Lord shortly after my birth. My parents divorced when I was three. They continued to be friends and were always so kind and loving toward one another during the duration of raising me. I'd be picked up every Sunday by my father, and he would take me to church and really tried to establish my faith from a young age. My mom was a single mom raising three children and did not have it easy to say the least. Her continual faith in Jesus through all life circumstances would be the foundation and the blueprint of my faith today. At age eight, I told my mom that I would like to be baptized and that I wanted to live my life for the Lord. Through middle school, I became very involved in my church youth group, and unfortunately, the church that I was attending disbanded and I was soon left without a church home. My mom was working weekends and trying to make ends meet, and mine and my dad's relationship was not the best at that time. I didn't end up finding a new church to attend. Entering high school, I really started to struggle with feelings of acceptance from my peers and wanting to fit in. I never felt like I belonged, and I started experimenting with drugs and alcohol in social situations in an attempt to fit in. It didn't work. At 17, my mom became ill and had to start a regimen of chemotherapy type medication. I quickly and gladly took on the role of my mom's support person and began working two jobs to help with expenses and to take some of the burden off of her. Taking care of my mom, coupled with a previous surgery of my own and a strained relationship with my dad, led me to become very depressed. I was worried about my mom. She was my best friend and was the strongest person that I knew. And seeing her struggle daily with the medication that she was taking was extremely difficult for me to handle. At times, I didn't know how I could cope with the weight of it all. In my early 20s, I really started drinking heavily, and I thought that it was just normal, and this is what all kids my age are doing. I found friends that had similar outlooks, and soon my life felt like one big party. At 24, I met my husband, and we quickly fell in love. He's not a believer, and being young and at this point in my life not strong in my faith, I put my personal beliefs aside in fear that I would lose him or that I wasn't the kind of woman that he would want to be with. With this outlook, I drifted even further away from the Lord. Both my husband and I were introduced through a friend to music festivals and the lifestyle that accompanies them. New Age concepts of love and light and everyone belongs was very appealing to me. I finally had that sense of belonging that I had been yearning for for most of my life. This is when I really started to question my faith. I was questioning if I really did believe in God, which was something that I had never done before. At 28, my husband and I were married, and one week later, I got a call that would send me into a spiral of self-destruction. My dad had died. He was killed in a freak accident when a tree on his property in Indiana was being cut down. My dad was out taking photos of the process as he had liked to document everything. The workers did not clear the site and the tree struck my dad. Losing my dad absolutely devastated me. I hadn't always had the best relationship with my dad. It was strained at times. He was a Vietnam vet and struggled with mental health issues for most of my life, but he was my dad. He loved me and I loved him with my whole heart. And in my adult years, I had become really close with him. 
In order to deal with the pain of losing my dad that my heart felt, I began to self-medicate. I drank very heavily, very heavily. I made bad life choices. I lived a life that was so full of sin. I was ashamed. I was void of any true joy or happiness. I was a complete mess, and I was just merely existing. I knew something had to give. I would often drop to my knees and cry out to the Lord in despair. I knew my life needed to change. I wanted it to change. I just didn't know how that was going to happen. When I was 29, I found out that I was expecting my first daughter, Charlie. Very quickly, this made me have to make good life choices for the sake of my child. She was a gift that God gave to me so that I could turn my life around. At 30, I gave birth to my beautiful angel of a daughter. I have called her my precious little angel from the time she was born because I believe that God gave her to me to help save me. After she was born, I did go back to drinking, <laughs> but it was more in a social way and I didn't continue on the path of self-destruction. I started reading a devotional each morning and started to read my Bible daily. I knew that I wanted to raise her knowing who Jesus was regardless of what my husband's beliefs were. Through a lot of prayer and asking for answers from the Lord, thank you. Where was I? Through a lot of prayer and asking for answers from the Lord, uh, he told me that we needed to move away from the area of which we were from, which was Southern California. My sister had just moved up here to Oregon, and Charlie and I took a trip up here to visit her. During that visit, I knew that we had to move our family here. Upon returning from our trip, I told my husband of our visit and that I thought that we should move to Oregon. He agreed, and six months later, we were here. With the move and the start of a new life in a new state, God gave me the courage to stop drinking. It was as if a veil had been lifted from my eyes. He gave me the strength to go through all of the changes that were taking place in my life. He gave me the strength to start the process of not hiding my faith any longer. He gave me, he was calling me back to him. And I was finally in a place where I chose to listen. I remember the exact day, and the exact moment where I said to myself, I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm going to do it with my whole heart. I rededicated my life to the Lord and was baptized for the second time. I will forever remember coming out of that water with the full understanding of what it means to be born again. I was redeemed through his blood. I was a new person. As I deepened my relationship with him through daily quality time in the word and in prayer, that's when I started to see the work that he was doing in me. Joy, hope, love, understanding, peace, comfort, all the things that Jesus is, I was being blessed with. Me, the wretched sinner, I was being blessed with all those things that Jesus is. I was finally able to see who I was meant to be and where I belonged in my life. And that's with Jesus. When I look back on my life now, I can clearly see that Jesus never left me. He never forsake me. He protected me. He carried me. He was always with me, and he never, ever stopped loving me. When I first started reading my Bible again for the first time in quite some time, um, I started reading the book of Psalms, and this was the first Bible verse that ever resonated with me, and I'm going to share it with you. And this is from Psalm 40, verse 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit 
out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear, and I will trust in the Lord. That's it. Thank you.